previously on Burp Plays Baldur Gate 3, we got a new familiar and I called him Fork. He explained on how to get in the mirror that we weren't able to get in before. Inside that mirror we found an old necromancy book that I don't know how to open. Then we went back to where the hyenas were and we found the pack leader attacking some poor people. After that fight, we needed to relax and sell our stuff so we went back to the grove. My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. Thank you. any effect. Oh, Mr. have mercy on us all. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. Go on, you're among friends. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. I'm what one might call a wizard prodigy from an early age could not only control the weave but compose it much like a musician or a poet such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself the lady of mysteries the goddess Mistra. she revealed herself to me and she became my teacher in time she became my muse and later even my lover It seems you and I have had a quite a different experience concerning Mistra. It's fair to say her intimacy is not easily won. Nevertheless, I did. We enjoyed each other's company. Body, mind and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross, yet every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. I sought to cross her boundaries. Time, everyone. Let's go. How exactly did you try to cross the boundaries? I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. Swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. But inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess, and yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured and shattered and all magic was lost to the mortal realms until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought, until in the course of my studies, I learned of a book, a netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? What was the answer to the question? 
The answer was to try. And the outcome was to fail. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next, here, place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of your dread. How are you still alive? Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Go on. I will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it would level a city the size of Waterdeep. Is there nothing we can do? We might chance upon a king's collection of magical artifacts around the corner. We might cross paths with a miracle round the bend. Then again, we might not. All of this, it must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. We've came this far together and we'll continue on together. That is how it will be. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. I stand at a precipice. But if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now, even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. Let us venture forth. A scout just reported. The goblin's leadership has been decimated. We might escape this place yet. I took a collection from all of us. It isn't much, but you've earned it. You can keep your coin. Very good of you. Thank you. Halsin will likely want to thank you too, mind. He returned just a while ago. I believe he's catching up with Korga. As for us... No armies at our heels. Amazing. We can finally leave. But perhaps we need not speak of farewells. We'll join your camp tonight to celebrate if you'll have us. We'll see you there. That's it. We can head to the city. Don't know about you, but I'm ready to start my life again. Hmm. Heltrell didn't want us. And those druids sure as hell didn't either. But you... You risked your life for us. Don't let that place cast a shadow on your... You saved us! Just like Baldy Ron! There we go, boy. Now, back to back. <clears throat> right. All of our takings stashed away for the journey? Yes, Mom. I'm glad.
glad you killed all the goblins. I hope you made them scared. And follow it downstream. It smells bad out here. I want to go home. You're lucky. You can go wherever you want. I hate you. You killed all the goblins and now we can't practice swords anymore. God, it seems we might actually make it to the city now. Hope the neighbours are a bit more welcoming. Mattis, this is junk. Waste of effort hauling it. I wanted to fight like you. Now they're just going to make me feed the animals again. You do good work. If you can handle more than goblins, might be I'll have use of you in Baldur's Gate. Always a deal to be done, even now. Try not to die up there. I'm glad you didn't die. No discounts once I'm running the wider Baldur's Gate, mind. Mattis says we should say thank you. Don't know why everyone's cheering. We're just going back on the road. I'm sorry I wasn't there to help. That'll change from now on, I promise. I'd have put good coin on you running off into the sunset, but you did it. You stopped the goblins. Thank you. You took care of the goblins. Nice work. With the goblins dead, we might actually make it to Baldur's Gate. I'm glad you came through it alive. We owe you more than we can repay. You killed the goblins. Hope you made them suffer. You've solved one problem for us. Guess it's on us to solve the next. The more weapons we have on show, the less likely anyone will give us trouble. I expected goblins at our gate any moment. Glad to say that you made a prettier sight. We're ready to head to your camp. Are you? Watching gods. While I was training children, you were out cutting down an entire goblin camp. What a mess. I wonder if the goblins have anything valuable on them. I'm going to have to write a song about you now, aren't I? But truly, thank you. It's nice to be done with the sad songs. For a time. 
and playing for coppers in the corners of Baldur's Gate. I can hardly stand the glamour. I knew this would come right if we just stayed positive. Not that your blade didn't help too. I shouldn't have doubted you, or the others. Back to worrying about road rations it is. So many mouths to feed, but well, that's not a bad problem to have. Thank you, truly. One sorrow ended, the next soon to begin. Now stop squirming. Boulder's Gate, we're coming. We didn't die today. Tomorrow, perhaps, but not today. Thanks to you. If we get separated or need to break camp fast, remember, find the river and follow it downstream. Thought you'd left us to our fate running off like you did. Glad I was wrong. Glad to see some goblin blood spilled for a change. I was sick of running from those rats. I nearly dispatched those goblins myself, but it seems you managed well enough. And why wield a masterwork where a butcher's blade will do? My thanks, truly. No. It was you, right? Who took care of the goblins? I knew you were a good one. You imperiled the grove. How dare you even look me in the eye? What are they? I did what Best I had on my to. Way. A pity you don't see that. I thought I had been a good teacher to you. Clearly not. Our gates should stay closed. You took it upon yourself to undertake the right of thorns. I ought to exile you from this place. Forever. Instead, I shall listen to the explanation that you owe me. I owe you nothing. Goblins swarmed us like roaches while you stumbled after the past. You chose to abandon us. I chose to protect us. Silence! The right has been ended. I will allow you to stay, but consider yourself a novice anew. You have forgotten the ways of the druids, our place in the natural order. You shall learn it all once again, right here. Backslide, and nature's fury will crush you. As you wish, Master Helsin. That's all? She tried to imprison a child. Her misjudgment. One that should weigh heavily upon her. But the Grove still needs her passion. You will soon see why. But enough of that for now. I owe you my thanks. The Grove stands. Nature prevails, and again I am in your debt. Speak to Wrath. He will reward you for your efforts. What about my problem? I need help. Tomorrow morning, we shall discuss what is to come. Banished. Then banish me. When the coming army marches, there will be none to protect you. I have something to ask. Peace. Enjoy it while it lasts. You've done it. You brought House in back. Thank you. No, thanks is not enough. May Sylvanus bless you for all your days. I cannot imagine taking on a camp full of goblins was a simple task. Think nothing of it. I'm glad housing is safe. As am I. The Grove will be whole again. 
And I promised you a reward, didn't I? Let me show you on your map where you can find the cache. Take this rune. You'll need it. Place it among the pedestals inside our library. When the wolf glows brightest, everything in the vault below will be yours. You did this grove a great favour. And now leave the rest to us. Peace. Enjoy it while it lasts. Blessed day. I was worried I'd never see Master Halson again. You kept your word. Thank you. You're just lucky I didn't swig that poison. Ha! Look, I'm sorry. I didn't know what to do when you told me about that tadpole. You're very welcome. I don't know if I can ever restore Sylvanus's peace to this place, but I'll have the chance, thanks to you. I think it's high time you all left. Our sacred grove has sheltered you enough. Where were you during the attack? Within the Inner Sanctum, of course. It is not for us to fight your battles. You disgust me. I assure you, the feeling is mutual. Kalek's temper is a sight to behold. She'll need to be careful. That rage will burn her right out. Go ahead. I'm listening. I was wondering about the mighty lord you told me about in your story. Carsus, I assume. The very same. Carsus was perhaps the most powerful wizard that ever lived. The child who would be a god, the elves called him. And he tried. With a spell of his own devising, he endeavored to usurp in one fell swoop the power of the goddess of magic. Mistril, she was called then. Imagine what it must have felt like to be a god. To know yourself, to be untouchable. To be mistaken. As Carsus aimed his spell at her, she began to unravel and with her, the entire weave. Too late did he realize what he had unleashed. It would have been the end of everything had not Mistral sacrificed herself. The goddess of magic is all magic. By dying, the entire weave was lost and the spell that challenged a god failed. It was the end of Mistral, the end of Carsus, and the end of an entire civilization. As the child who would be a god was turned to stone, his empire came crashing down around him. The floating cities of Netheril were no more. An event that came to be known as Carsus's folly. Praise be that Mistral was reborn as Mistra. Quite so. Now, so many centuries later, I tried to follow in the footsteps of Carsus. 
Not to destroy Mistra, but to prove my love for her. I tried to control only a fraction of the magic that was unleashed that fateful day. I merely sought to return one tiny diamond to an imperfect crown. Gale's folly, one might call it. History. Repetition. It's the way things go. If you ever feel the magic overtaking you, what will you do? If it should ever come to that, if I ever know I am no longer able to stop it, I will do anything I can to ensure no one but me pays for my mistakes. I will find the remotest place on the surface of Faerun, or perhaps far below in the depths of the Underdark. I will await that death, alone. I promise I will not betray your trust. You kept me by your side despite the menace that I am. If worse comes to worst, I will be long gone before the curtain falls. What's on your mind? How did you end up with such a contraption inside your chest? The year? Ten air. The place? A sleepy little town called Baldur's Gate. Our hero? Karlak. A knock-kneed delinquent from the outer city with everything to give and nothing to lose. I was a kid looking for a way to fill my days and make some cash when I fell into the wrong crowd. Worked for a guy I respected. A lot. Turns out the feeling wasn't mutual. Through the jigs and the reels, he made a deal with Zariel behind my back. You know Zariel, right? Archdevil of Avernus. She put this thing in my chest and set me to work. But to war. I learned quick how to stay alive. And the engine served me when it came to killing devils. Ten years of that. The stories I could tell. You mentioned a boss who gave you up to Zarel. Who is it? Guy named Gortash. Politician. Inventor. One of these wheeler dealer types who seems to have a finger in every pie. I guess I was naive to think everything he got up to was above board. What did I know? I saw a job. A good job. With people I liked. Doing work I was good at. Sometimes I'm jealous of that girl. Oh, to feel so invincible again. What does that infernal engine do to you? Gives me energy. Power. But you've seen it in action. Very hard to control. If I'm excited at all, angry, nervous, delighted, enticed, I burn hot. Hot enough to burn anyone who gets close. What's that been like? Agonizing. God's what I wouldn't give for a hug. A pat. Anything. You've never met anyone so desperate for a hug as this one right here. Pathetic, perhaps, but true. It's my lot to bear, and I bear it badly. Oh well. Can't have it all, can you? Not today, at least. Soldier? Now that those paladins are out of the way, What's next on your agenda? First things first, I need to get this engine tuned up. Thing's powerful, but it's been feeling volatile ever since I left the Hells. Can't be too hard to find an infernal mechanic ground here, right? Well, this is it. Thanks everybody for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. The next episode is on the works. See you guys later.